Hello, I'm Miss Stellar. Welcome to the first ever The Joy of Landscape Painting with Miss Stellar in honor of the great Bob Ross. Or in my case, I look a little more like the little orphan Amy. But that's okay. We're going to dive right in. We're going to learn a painting step by step. And you are welcome to follow along with me. Pause as needed. Email me if you need help. But you can also make your own afterwards after you've been inspired and seen the steps. I know a lot of us missed our painting demonstration because we had to leave school early. So now's your time to learn it. I selected an image from Pinterest. I'm gonna change it up a little bit, but it's more of an inspiration from our Blue Ridge Mountains. So that way you can have something that maybe you can relate to, or you can always do something different, like I said. So material wise, you need to make sure you set up your station. I am using lots of different colors paint. At normally at school, I make you mix, but since we're here, um, you know, whatever you have at school or whatever you have at home, that's what you have. So I'm using a light blue, dark blue, white, black, red, and yellow. I'm using an eight by 10 stretched canvas. You can see it has some sides. Use whatever you have. I have a paper towel. I have a container of water. And I have a big brush and a little brush. We're gonna start with our big brush and we're going to take down the water, tap on our paper towel, and we're gonna get some blue paint. Now, we're gonna scoop from the side. You can see I've already painted with this paint and it helps it not get ruined. You just scoop from the side. And we're gonna start with our background. It's always best to work from the back and work your way up, right? So we're gonna start from the top and just go back and forth. Now, because mine has sides and a top and bottom, I'm gonna go ahead and paint that as I go. Getting more blue paint. I didn't have enough on my paintbrush. And I'm just going to paint from side to side, making it smooth, going back and forth, and stopping about halfway. Then I'm gonna work my way back up work my way back down and I should have pretty much all the paint off my paintbrush. From there, I'm going to grab some white. Now I'm going to clean my brush. We wouldn't do this at school, but since you're at home, you're going to get your white and scoop from the side. See, it didn't ruin it. it wasn't like a sunny side up egg and forever blue. Now it is just white. So I have white on my brush and I'm going to start from the bottom and I'm going to go back and forth and you can see paint blends best when it's wet. So the more you go back and forth, the more they're gonna blend together. Back and forth. And you see that dark blue really change lighter because that white. Love it. Then I'm gonna clean my brush. Remember, we're not gonna get super intense. You just beat, beat it in the bottom of your cup. Make sure all the paint's out of it. Wipe it on the side and check that it's dry on your paper towel. Then I'm gonna get some white again, and I'm just gonna kind of really just brush some white into it. These are gonna be more cloud shapes later. It's kind of like we're working and just setting the set. Love it. Now, not even gonna clean my brush. I'm gonna go into my light blue, scoop from the side, and we're gonna start doing our mountains. Now, Blue Ridge Mountains are not pointy. They're kind of more long and wavy. So we're just gonna kind of draw a long wavy line over our landscape or sky a little bit and just paint it in using my big brush. Then I'm gonna get some more blue and do the same thing. You can see they're kind of blending together. Now what we are using or what we're seeing is atmospheric perspective. So as things are in the front, things are more detailed, they have a lot more values and they're bigger. And as they go back, things get smaller, they get less detailed. And for mountains, that's what kind of makes it to where it looks kind of extra misty. So we're gonna add the white to it later, but you can see that it's okay that they kind of aren't very detailed at the moment. Then I'm going to not even clean my brush and get my dark blue. I'm gonna adjust this so you can see it better. And I'm going to do a long blue line here and one back here. And then I'm simply gonna paint those in. It's gonna kind of blend the colors together. 
and it gets some more blue, dark blue. And you can see that now you have different kind of mountain ranges. You have one in the front, you have a middle ground, and then you have ones going off into the background. Now we're gonna put this big brush up and now use our little brush. And I'm gonna use this little brush for the rest of the painting. Making sure it's clean. And I'm gonna get some dark blue and I'm going to do some lines to kind of separate the, um, what I just painted with the background. You can see the more I go back and forth, the more it can blend together. Maybe I wanted to add more than what I already created and make it look like there's more mountains. It's kind of up to you. Then I'm gonna clean my brush and repeat that with white. Just gonna make it, I'm actually gonna start from the top and go down. I'm gonna make these to where they look a little softer because they're the furthest away. Then I'm gonna just kind of loosely add some white to these other mountains. If you have a heavy hand like I sometimes do, what I do is I hold my paintbrush up further back so I can't press down to her and I can be a little more flicky with my wrist and a little looser. And I'm even gonna add some white to my front mountains and I'm gonna be really loose with it. I'm doing that flick. And I'm just gonna kind of make them to where they have a little more value, a little more lights and darks. What do you think? So far so good. You can see that we have a lot of different types of blues going on. We're gonna add more to it, but we're gonna let our mountains kind of dry and go back to our sky. So clean your little brush and get some white on there. We're gonna do our clouds. So you've already done some white lines. We're gonna add some more. Remember, I'm really loose with it. And you can kind of do some dab dabs if you want, but the clouds in the picture I'm looking at, and typically what you see around the mountains are more streaky. They're more lines. Now, the image I'm looking at is kind of like a sunrise. So we are gonna go get our yellow and a little bit goes a long way. So a little brush, scoop from the side, get us a little bit of yellow. You can see I can make my brush big, like thick or thin. We're gonna use it thin. And we're just gonna kind of loosely add some yellow into our sky. Now, if you turned green, just pause. It's totally fine. Let your blue dry and then you can add the yellow on top again. But if it's not green, go for it. Add your yellow. It's a little more on the sides. And it's just kind of making it to where it breaks up where you're, you can know your skies and your mountains are at different spots. Now, I'm not even gonna clean my brush. I'm gonna get some white, scoop from the side. And you're gonna see adding a little bit of white even on top, not even directly, just kind of in the same general area. It's gonna make it to where the yellow turns a lighter yellow. It's going to make it more interesting. That yellow can kind of stay on your brush. Beautiful. All right. Now we're going to go for the red. Now, as you can tell, the red's going to be really dark. So I'm not even going to clean my brush. I'm getting just a little bit because you don't want it to kind of look like a, you know, horror film. So I'm just going to get a little bit and you're just going to loosely very gently add, and I'm switching both thick and thin, adding some red into your sky. Beautiful. Yeah. Now, it's kind of personal preference. Do you want to add a rising sun? Do you want it just to be the colors? It's kind of up to you. I might add a little bit more white, but I need to let it dry a little bit. So I'm gonna do that towards the end. Okay, I'm gonna clean my brush and now I'm gonna grab some of that light blue again and touch up my mountains. I feel like they kind of blend in together a little too much. So I'm kind of just separating them out, adding a little light blue some places. I'm not even gonna clean my brush and get some dark blue and gently kind of separate out lines. And then here in my foreground with my mountains, I'm gonna get some dark blue and I'm just gonna kind of 
and even kind of make little X's, just kind of fill up some of the corners to make them look a little darker to have that foreground have a little bit more detail. I'm even going to use that blue and I'm going to tap and it's going to make it look like there's some trees. You know, like fading into the distance. And ask yourself, what do you think? Maybe you need to step back. Maybe you need to look at it. Here's how mine's looking. You can see that it looks a lot different when it's up close than when it's far away. Now, Gonna add some details later. We always add white towards the end, but now we're gonna add our trees. So I'm gonna clean my brush. I'm gonna go for the black. Now the black can be really intense, really fast. So I'm going to draw lines that are gonna represent the trunks of my trees. I'm gonna get the black. I'm gonna get it from the side. I wanna make sure it's not chunky. I wanna make sure it's just a line. So I'm looking at the image behind you and I have a tall tree here. little trees and have some variety make them different heights make some more interesting yeah. all right then to add your leaves we're not adding any greens we're just using the black so you have two options you can do it like you kind of draw your christmas trees where you kind of just do like a little swoop or a comma on both sides but on these i'm doing a little more like kind of the trees we have in the area so think of it as like the top of a triangle the top of the tree is smaller, and as you go down, they get longer, like on the sides, and they get a little thicker. So I'm going to show you here. So I have my little brush in black, and I'm going to tap, tap to kind of create that texture. Tap, tap on top, just the top of a triangle. Skip a little bit. And you can see they gradually get longer in length and thicker. And if they go into the other trees, that's fine. And then towards the end, if you kind of want to work your way up and make it a little thicker, it's totally fine. So watch me do it on the other tree. I'm gonna wipe my brush on my paper towel so it's not so chunky. Got some black. Start from the top. And you can see I'm working really fast. You take your time, fill it up. Start from the top, need some more black. And we'll do another layer. Love it. And then this one in the picture kind of has a really long trunk and then has a really long trunk and then it has the things on top. So I'm just going to stop about halfway. Just like that. I love it. Now, do you want to add some black into your mountains? Maybe make some of those look a little more like trees. You can consider that. Maybe you want to have it to where there's some shadows down there. What do you think? Now, I'm going to take a pause on my trees and I'm going to go into my sky. So I got to clean my brush really well because I'm going to go get some white. And I'm going to add some extra white to my clouds and make them pop. Oh, yeah. See how that really stands out. Maybe I want to add some white to the little bit of my back mountains, kind of misty mountain style. Maybe even have a little bit to my foreground. Love it. Then my last step is to go back into my trees and make them to where they're darker with the black and a little bit thicker. So I'm simply going to go on what I've already done. Maybe I thicken them up a little bit. Anywhere where I'm doing a second coat of paint is going to be darker black. Anywhere where it's first is going to be a little lighter and that's going to make it to where it looks a little more like a tree because trees, you know, they're not all the same color. it. 
you can add some lines. Maybe you didn't like those trees. Maybe you want some more dramatic ones here. Oh, that's too much. That's okay. I just let it dry and I can go right on top of it. Or I can just blend it while I have it and make it work. It's okay, it's your painting. It can look different than mine. And there we have it. We have a very subtle Blue Ridge landscape painting. Now, I want to make sure and see what you create. So remember for your assignment for Nature Week, you have four different things you can do. This is one of them. You can of course do more than one. I would love to see what you create, especially if you're painting and you decide to do this one or you decide to do something else. I hope this was helpful. I hope that you had fun. And you can see that I can always step back and come back later and make up any touches. But I really like that colors in the sky. I think that looks really nice. Maybe if I wait a little bit, I can always add a little bit more darker blue in my mountains. So let's say I just waited a little bit. I wanted these mountains to kind of stand out more a little bit because I'm looking at it from the side. I can simply just add that to it now, make it to where it blends. A wave, you know, doesn't blend in so much with my sky. Oh yeah. So now, it's, you know, it's kind of your personal preference. What is something that makes you happy that you would want to hang up in your house? So I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you need any help. And I will see you soon. Bye. Good night.